Well, I hope you find those lions, Jamie, and, well, you've already seen our wildebeest earlier, but they've been a bit mesmerizing this morning. As we were kind of continuing on our way to try and go and help Jamie, we decided just to stop and watch the wildebeest, and they've been having such a good time this morning. The young ones are playing with one another. They're trying to sort of wrestle and butt heads, and there's lots of pushing and shoving. Some of the females are getting involved and chasing the young ones around, so it's been so good to watch them. And I can't believe how relaxed they've actually become in the sort of months that they've, well, in the last month or so that they've been here. Slowly but surely, they're getting more and more used to our presence. I'm currently standing, I would say, no more than 60 meters from where they are, which for a wildebeest is very, very close. And the fact that they really don't care too much about me, they are watching a little bit, and every now and then they let out an alarm call about, sort of towards us as if to say that, you know, we know that you're there. But other than that, they're drifting quite close. You can see the bunch on my left-hand side, they've come a lot closer, and they've been sort of milling around us. And like I said, there's been chasing and games been going on. It really is quite amazing to watch, and it's such a nice way to start the day. It very is very 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 special indeed and you can see the young ones they'll go onto their front legs at times there we go and that's all just part of playing and they'll sort of challenge each other like that and when they get a little bit older and they get to big dominant males that's actually how they fight a lot of the time for some reason a wildebeest likes to get much lower and get down onto its front knees and they will then lock horns like that and push each other around so even as big old males that's how they will sort of settle disputes is by doing that and so these young ones it's all just practicing and honing that technique for when they get a little bit older and they do indeed have to fight for territory and you can see because they're quite sort of active this morning and, and moving around around quite a bit there's a number of birds that are in amongst the feet of the of the wildebeest and those are all there trying to get all the insects that these wildebeest are disturbing while they're running around but isn't this cool you can see every now and then there's a female that will join in the game and they chase each other around So, Riti, you're wondering if wildebeest use their horns only to fight. Well, Riti, they might try in a desperate situation, in a struggle with a predator, to use their horns to try and defend themselves. So I have seen when something like a wild dog comes in and they corner these wildebeest, then you'll find that they'll use their horns for defense. But more than anything else, it's to try and establish dominance and to try and then fight with one another and make sure that they get a hierarchy forming in terms of the males being the dominant in this particular area. It's a little bit different in, in Kenya where Brent is, um, the Masai Mara, because of the sheer number of them that filter in there during the next few months, they can't afford to have the same system as what we have here where we've got a territorial male and his harem of females. There's just too many wildebeest there and so then you'll find that they just fight as a female comes into heat and the strongest male will then mate with that female but they're not territorial like what we see here. But I have seen, interestingly enough, when wild dogs chased a sort of group of wildebeest on elephant plains the one time and these the dogs sort of circled round this herd of wildebeest and there was one male and lots of babies and it was around the time when the young ones were born and so the dogs were trying to get after the babies and what they try to do is they try kind of run in and one dog will run in and another dog run in and they try and split the herd and cause this panic so that they break and run and they can then grab one of those little ones because once they, the, the herd is running it's much easier for the dogs to grab that little one and put it down but the wildebeest were very clever and well organized they just got into a tight bunch all the young ones went into the middle much like what you see with the elephant herds and then the sort of adults on the edges and the big dominant male so like our man on the top there he's on the sort of back left which is still watching out for his herd and making sure that they're all okay he was came forward and he started chasing those wild dogs and he eventually actually caught up with one of the dogs and he used those horns to flick the dog into the air and try and maim it and the dog actually had a big gaping wound on it it did heal from it and the dog survived but it was just amazing to see how defensive these wildebeest can be when they want to be but it's such a cool thing to spend time with we don't often spend time with animals Animals like this on foot and so you kind of lose that sort of impressiveness about them and and so spending a little bit of time and um, sort of blending in with them is actually quite fun and it's what, interesting just to watch their little dynamics amongst them as they move around in the early mornings. Now Skip who's 12 years old all the way from Texas you're wondering how their horns start to bend 
because they start off straight. Well, skip, basically what happens is as the horn gets longer, so it then just starts to form like that. It's just one of nature's mysteries. We don't know exactly why it happens like that. There is no sort of hard rule that says that's why it forms that way. It's the same as the kudu's horn and the nyala's horns that twist. It's just the way that nature has designed them. And so we don't really know for sure why it happens or how it happens, but it just as they get older, it just starts to drop down and then it forms that curl. It's much like the buffalo as well when they're born the buffalo's horn is also straight but by the time it gets older it has those big sort of curves in it and so it's just nature's way unfortunately there's some things out here that we just won't ever understand or know exactly why they do that it's probably to do with some way that they when they establish dominance that they lock horns and their head position that just helps to protect the skull as well as to get as much grip as possible when they're trying to fight one another but there's like i say some things out here that we just don't know and probably will never know it's just the way nature's designed them